Hi folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy. Now, you know, if you're like me, you've been bullish about using AI generated imagery in your e-learning courses. I don't know if this is true for anyone else out there, but like most AI images are just obviously AI images and I don't like that aesthetic. Um, but I think the bigger issue, the big roadblock for me has been like, I can't really use an AI generated character because what if I need that character in multiple poses or expressions and I wanna maintain a consistent look with that character, right? That's like the most common hurdle. And, and you know, over the years to solve that, we've used character cutout packs, right? These collections of characters and different poses and expressions, right? Holding signs and doing things that normal people don't do in the real world, but like it's gotten us by, right? And most of them are, you know, they're fine. You know, I mean, Articulate has added some modern characters that are dressed like they bought clothes within the past five years, but like the vast majority of characters look like they're from circa, I don't know, 2005. And don't get me wrong, like I love Atsumi. Atsumi has been like a ride and die for like almost two decades now. I've even met Atsumi. Atsumi is so cool, but like Atsumi really needs a wardrobe makeover. And unfortunately, like we can't do that, right? But recently, the reason I bring all this up is that recently the folks at uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI made some updates to ChatGPT that allows you to generate imagery. But more importantly, you can generate characters, cutout characters, and then you can generate those cutout characters in multiple different poses and expressions and maintain the same character. And that's what I wanna show you, how you can do that for yourself. All right, so here I am on my computer. I have ChatGBT open. I will tell you right off the bat, I am using the paid, I think it's like $20 a month version of ChatGBT. It's well worth the investment. And I wanna show you how easy it is to generate consistent looking cutout characters, which you can use directly in your e-learning courses, right? Now, again, as I've told you all before, like I don't like I don't know anything about prompt engineering. I don't really think it's necessary. Like I'm just gonna tell it what I need, right? So I'm gonna say, hey, I always address it for some reason. I'm working on an e-learning course for new leaders on how to deliver effective performance reviews and feedback. I need a character. Uh, Let's say, let's make this more specific. I need a photo realistic character um, who will act as my leader in the course. This character is a mid 30s Hispanic woman. She works at a tech company comma with a mm, business casual dress code and as you can all see like you can't spell for the life of me one of the things i've learned about chat gpt is it doesn't care about your misspellings i've like typed in garble before and it, like it knew what i was typing it's really weird okay so this is what i'm going to put into it i'm creating a course I need a cutout character um, for a leader, mid-30s Hispanic woman. She works at a tech company, business casual dress code. Whoop, let's hit send and see what it comes up with. Now, if any of you have ever played with this, this new image generation tool, it can sometimes take a few minutes. So with the magic of editing, we'll fast forward to when this is ready. All right, so here we have our image of our leader, our Hispanic, mid-30s, business casual leader, right? Now, it does have a little bit of an AI aesthetic to the image, but like, frankly, it's good enough for an e-learning course. Now, I could copy and paste this image, right? But this isn't really a cutout character. It still has the office background, but this is, again, where ChatGPT is gonna do the work for me. Um, I'm gonna tell it this, is great, but I need this as a cutout character. Can you make her with a transparent background? Let's see what it does with that. All right, now while it loads here, I just wanna pause here. It's really cool what it's doing. Like as it's creating the image, like I said, sometimes it takes about a minute, but what I love about this is like, you actually kind of get to see the image come together. And I don't know if this is just like an animation that they've put in there to pass the loading time, but it's really interesting to watch 
this weird blurry thing take shape into the final image here. So we'll give it a moment here. All right, so that took about a minute and a half to generate. It wasn't too long of a wait. Now, what I want to remark on here is, like, it removed the background of our character. It's clearly the same character, same clothes, same everything, right? Now, it might have just removed the background from this image, but they're exactly the same. Now, this is where the cool thing happens, right? So we have our character here. This image totally works fine, right? But if I'm creating an e-learning course where I'm gonna be using this character multiple times, I need multiple expressions, multiple poses, this is where I can start prompting for that, right? So I'm gonna say, this is great. Positive feedback for the AI is always a good thing, right? Hopefully in the future, when it comes after us, who knows? Um, can you generate um, her looking at and reviewing a piece of paper? Right, so like if I'm doing a performance review thing, maybe I want a pose of her reviewing the performance review. Let's see what it comes up with. We'll give it a moment. All right. So we have our image here. Now, again, I just have to remark on this. It's the same character, same clothes, same denim shirt, same blazer, same hair, right? I mean, there's some minor differences if we look really, really closely, but like I said, it's good enough. It, it's substantially good enough for any learning course. I mean, before, I remember I helped a student create um, cutout characters and or create AI-generated images, and it had like a second neck coming out of its shoulder, right? So this is remarkably you know, improve, right? So let's do another one. Uh, let's do another uh, pose with her uh, gesturing and explaining. Yeah, let's just do explaining. Let's see what comes up with, with that. Like she's gonna be like, Ugh, or something, right? That's my pose for explaining. You know what I mean? Okay, so we have our character here, pretty good. We have one, two, three, four, five fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven fingers on this hand, right? This is where we're still running into some issues with AI. I could probably prompt to fix that. Let's do one more pose. Um, let's do one more, this time with her confused and thinking. All right, so we have our character here. She's confused, she's thinking. Maybe the employee didn't respond well to the feedback. But again, we have our consistent looking character. Hands are looking a little bit more normal this time, right? I think hands are gonna be, it's gonna be a while for our AI to, to, to get the hands right. But, you know, I think we're, we're off to the races here. I'm not sure, did this one not come through transparent? I'll show you how I would fix that here in a moment. Now. Um, one of the other cool things that I've discovered with AI is that, like, let's say we're doing this with a photorealistic character, right? But what if I want to do something with a different style of character, but I want it to be like her? Let's say, mm, can we generate a version of her as a line um, vector character, right? Same character, but a totally different style, not photorealistic a line vector character. Let's see what it comes up with. All right, so we have our character here. Now it's not perfect. You can see it still made the hand and the pants transparent, but we could fix that outside of ChatGBT. But look at that. It's our character in a totally different style. Now with these characters, what's great about these images, I can just simply uh, save the image to my computer I close this, I'll put this on my desktop and it'll show up there here in a moment. We'll go ahead and save this one, put that on my desktop. Oop, let me uh, image two, save that. Let's go ahead and save this, image three. And I'm even going, no, oh, let's save this one too. Uh, what do I have, image one, let's do image one. All right, we're good. 
Okay, oh, this one. Do we have this one? Yes, but it, this one does have a transparent background, it looks like. Oh, okay, it must have saved it as a transparent one. I'm not gonna worry about this one here, right? So if I close this now, we have our images, and I wanna point out like really good, high quality images. Uh, now, the more you zoom in, the more you're going to discover it's AI, but people aren't going to be looking at the character this close in detail, right? And of course, now if we hop over to um, Storyline here, now I can go ahead and insert uh, our characters. I'm just going to do a picture from file. Here I have them on my desktop, and we'll start with our smiling pose, right? And you can see here we have a transparent background. We have our cutout character. She's on my slide. Maybe I'll put her on this one. Insert picture from file. Maybe this one's gonna be looking at some papers on how to deliver effective feedback. Maybe we will reflect her so she's you know looking that way so it's more like angling towards the text. And then maybe on this one, we will do our final one. She's explaining some stuff with her seven different fingers. You know, that's totally fine. Who's paying attention to that? Maybe it can be an Easter egg in your course or something, right? But now, like, what's so cool about this is I have now generated multiple versions of our main character. It looks photorealistic. You'd have to really pay attention to notice it's AI, right? But I have multiple versions of her in multiple poses. And then, of course, if I wanted to, I could generate other characters if I'm doing a scenario or dialogue or something along those lines. And they're transparent and ready to go, modern looking characters, all right? So that is a quick little how to on how you can now use ChatGBT to generate cutout characters for your e learning courses, all right? So I wanna know what you think. Have you used ChatGBT to generate some cutout characters or other images? Let me know your thoughts by. I don't know, typing down in the comments, right? As always, though, I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and that bell button to get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, join us inside our free community in the eLearning Designers Academy at eLearningAcademy.io, where we help new instructional designers and eLearning developers grow their careers by focusing on skills first. Otherwise, my name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.